Orders of the day. Orders of the day, government orders, business of supply. Debate on Mr. Rankin's motion on decriminalization of marijuana possession. Mr. Rankin, seconded by Ms. Quash, moves that the House A recognize the contradiction of continuing to give Canadian criminal records uh, for simple possession of marijuana after the government has stated that it should not be a crime. Recognize that this situation is unacceptable to Canadian municipalities and law enforcement agencies. Recognize that a growing number of voices, including that of a former Liberal Prime Minister, are calling for decriminalization to address this gap and call upon the government to immediately decriminalize the simple possession of marijuana for personal use. The Honourable Member for Victoria. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm proud to rise today on this important Opposition Day motion dealing with the interim measure, the preparatory step to the legalization promised by the current government in its election campaign, namely addressing the decriminalization of the possession of small quantities of marijuana. Madam Speaker, I wish to announce that I'll be sharing my time with the member for salaberry sur quoi Madam Speaker, we are faced with an injustice. We are faced with a situation that is difficult to explain to the parents of young adults. When I'm called by a, a, a mother in tears who says, my child has just been convicted of the possession of small quantities of marijuana, he or she will not be able to get a job because they will have a record and they'll be at the bottom of the pile when it comes to job applicants. They will no doubt be unable to travel to the United States. They face heavy consequences, including perhaps finding a place to rent when that is disclosed on their application. Meanwhile, we have the government saying that within a short period of time, they will be bringing in measures, amendments presumably to the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, that would put together a regime to, regular, to regulate and, de, and to permit the adults to, co, to consume marijuana. Now, of course, we already have medical marijuana available thanks to the courts of the land and legislation and regulations that were brought in re, in response to that. But we're talking about young people in particular, but all Canadians who wish to consume a substance that will be illegal. So what's the problem? The problem is it may take two years, Madam Speaker, for the government to implement the regime it promised in the October election. The Minister of Health, <clears throat> when she spoke in New York at the United Nations, said, quote, it is impossible to arrest our way, our way out of the problem, close quote. And of course she's right. But they're going to continue to arrest their way out of the problem for likely until uh, 2018. If she promised that there would be legislation introduced in the spring of 2017, then it may be that that legislation, given the requirements of debate, committee work in both the House and the other place, it won't be implemented with signature of the Governor General until perhaps 2018. In that, in that particular circumstance, Madam Speaker, something perhaps approaching 100,000 Canadians should it take two years, will find themselves with a record for possession of small quantities of marijuana. Statistics Canada reports that something approaching 60,000 Canadians a year are going to be convicted for that, uh, for that offence, because it currently is an offence. The government would have you say, well, the law is the law is the law. And of course they're right on that, Madam Speaker. But what they don't tell you is that they have the ability under the law to address this injustice. And that ability can be found in any number of ways. Now, I'm not here to suggest the best way, but one way I will speak to, Madam Speaker. If they wished to address this as a preparatory step on their road to regulate, regulation and uh, uh, permitting the use of marijuana for recreational purposes. They have the ability under the Director of Public Prosecutions Act for the Attorney General, our Minister of Justice, to issue a directive to the Director of the Public Prosecution Services 
to the effect that it is no longer in the public interest for small quantities of marijuana to be the subject of prosecutions. We're fortunate because that's quite readily done, Madam Speaker, because this particular substance, marijuana, is not regulated under the criminal code, which would engage all of the attorneys general and crown counsel across the land at the various provinces level. But no, it is dealt with under the Department of Justice through the DPP, the Public Prosecution Service, so that it would be federal employees, crown counsel, who would be given that directive. And in that way, we could ensure that what I, what I fear is a patchwork across the country is dealt with as well. When I say a patchwork, the situation at present is chaotic at best, Madam Speaker. I live in Victoria. The police have better things to do than to prosecute people for simple possession of marijuana in most circumstances. However, in the city of Saskatoon, in Saskatchewan, prosecution occurs much more readily. In the city of Kelowna, it occurs much more readily. We have a completely different regime in Canada, depending where you are, for the, to address the possession of marijuana. As a Canadian, I find that offensive. We live in one country. Why is it that the law is so radically different in the real world, depending where you happen to be? That seems wrong. So that injustice can be dealt with quite readily, uh, Madam Speaker, should the government wish to do so. I've suggested one technique by which it could be achieved, but there no doubt are other techniques open to the government that wish to say that. So they no longer can simply hide behind the veil that, oh well, it's against the law, the law is the law until it's changed. They have an interim way in which to, to change that law. There are preparatory steps along the way that would deal with the injustices. In addition, hundreds of thousands of Canadians have uh, uh, records, criminal records, for the possession of marijuana, going back often 20 years. That's wrong. The government could, as a consequential amendment, deal with that, and I hope that they do. But in the meantime, people's lives are being affected. People's lives are being affected by an injustice that could be addressed by this government should it wish to do so. Now, Madam Speaker, um, it's important to recognize that, the, um, that we are not advocating that marijuana be made available any more than the government is to, for young people. We want, a, we want and respect the government's efforts to achieve a robust regulatory regime that keeps marijuana out of the hands of young people, children, and so forth. But we also want a regime where the injustices that are occurring now are addressed before we have to wait perhaps a year and a half or two years to address. And that is, that is the reason for uh, my, my motion today to address this problem. Um, I think Canadians are expecting clarity from their government, and New Democrats believe it's irres irresponsible to allow valuable resources of police and courts to be wasted while a new cr cr uh, criminal records created for something that will be perfectly legal. Now, Madam Speaker, I asked the Minister of Justice when she appeared before the Justice Committee to talk about this issue. It was reported that by the director, by the Public Prosecution Service, that the government plans to spend three to four million dollars each year prosecuting simple possession of marijuana. Shame. That's money that could be spent doing things that Canadians need to be addressed in an urgent way. Two or three percent of their whole budget, that includes terrorism, prosecution of drugs, criminal code, is being used for this purpose, according to the Director of Public Prosecutions. That's his evidence. Let me read to you, Madam, Madam Speaker, something that Justice Selkirk of the Ontario Court of Justice said in a case called Regina and Racine. He refused to accept a guilty plea for possession of marijuana. I'd like to read what the Honourable Justice said in court that day. <clears throat> I recall distinctly the Prime Minister in the House of Commons saying it's going to be legalized. I'm not going to be the last judge in this country to convict somebody of simple possession of marijuana. You can't have the Prime Minister announcing it's going to be legalized and then stand up and prosecute it. It just can't happen. It's a ludicrous, ludicrous situation. So I asked her, given those costs, would the government consider doing anything different? And the answer was vague to non-existent. 
So from a financial point of view, from the heavy hardship we're imposing, particularly on our younger population, and the member for Salaberry Surwa will speak to that in greater detail, there's every reason to address this gap. And the excuses given by the government for not doing so simply do not hold water. There, there, could, there were, uh, as I say, ch uh, changes that could be made in the interim. And I want to end by saying, Madam Speaker, something that I said at the outset. The New Democratic Party agrees, like former Prime Minister Krejcian, that the time has come for decriminalization. We believe that there is every ability to fix this problem. It's a question of political will and sound public policy. To hide behind the status quo and do nothing is the government's particular option until they finally have a law enacted is not right. It creates a continuing injustice in this country, which is felt in different parts of the country in different ways. And we say on, the, on this side of the House that it's time to fix that problem now. Here's Thank you. Here. Here, here. Questions and comments? Uh, questions and commentaires? Honorable... The Honourable Member for Trois-Rivières. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, obviously, I listened uh, very carefully to our uh, critic for Justice's speech, and I would like to benefit from his expertise to broaden uh, the scope of the discussion somewhat, uh, because before uh, becoming a police officer, I taught for 25 years in a secondary school, and we know that there are incidents with teens very often. So finding yourself with a uh, record at the age of 14 or 15 because uh, you've been dragged along with the group and tried out an illegal substance is already problematic because that is a problem you'll be carrying with on your shoulders for a long time. It's more and more difficult in Canada to get a pardon uh, without uh, referring to the costs of doing this. The Honourable Member. I want to thank my colleague from Trois-Rivières for his experience and expertise that he brings to bear on this important debate. It is heartbreaking to receive letters from parents saying, my child was dragged in, into a group setting, made, experimented with this substance, which, oh, by the way, will be legal in a couple of years' time, and his or her life is destroyed, at least in the short term, until a pardon may or may not be granted. And as the honourable member pointed out, getting a pardon gets increasingly difficult reforms made by the, the former government has, have made that even more expensive and difficult than in the past. So why, in that circumstance, won't the government understand that to simply hide behind, oh well, the law is the law until we change it, when they have techniques that they could bring to bear to fix it now, is truly beyond my understanding. In comments, questions et commentaires, the Honourable Member for Scarborough Southwest. Madam Chair. Um, I would just wanted to inquire. The, the, the member from uh, Victoria made reference to a particular court case. Uh, I believe it was uh, heard by Judge Justice Selkirk. Um, he quoted some remarks made by Justice Selkirk, but I'm, I'm, there are other relevant remarks, and I just wanted to ask him about that, if I may, through you, Madam Chair. Um, and, and Mr. Selkirk, in response to his remarks, was advised by the Crown Attorney that the Federal Crown's position is that the, the possession of marijuana was still illegal to possess, and therefore it's still the law, to which the Court said, well, okay, and reset a trial date. And then subsequently, in sentencing the accused in that matter on other things, the judge issued an order that he, the accused was not to possess or consume any unlawful drugs or substances except with a valid prescription. And I just wanted to, was, was curious um, if the opposite member was aware of all of the facts of, of that particular case or only the small portion that he quoted. The Honourable Member for Victoria. Yes, thank you. Uh, and thank you to my friend from Scarborough Southwest for that additional remark. The remark I read was indeed a quote from the tra court transcript brought to our attention by the Director of Public Prosecutions. The, what happened subsequently in that case was indeed other charges and sentenced for other matters. But nevertheless, the, uh, the remarks that were made, I think, are very much reflective of what I hear from judges across this land. As justice critic for the opposition, I frequently hear from judges, mostly at the provincial court level, that are de dealing with these issues in my province, and they are as frustrated as other Canadians with the status quo. Questions and comments? The questions and commentaires? The Honourable Member for Barry Innisfil. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I want to thank the uh, Honourable Member for uh, his statement this afternoon. Um, my question it <clears throat> relates to, uh, to presumptions, and uh, the Honourable Member has already spoken about the fact that there's a lot of confusion in the land 
uh, for uh, the pending uh, legalization of marijuana that the Liberal government has talked about, although we all are aware that, uh, that that's not legal at this point, but the presumption of allowing it to be decriminalized. Um, and I'd like to ask the Honourable Member through you, Madam Speaker, wouldn't this create just as much confusion in the absence of legislation uh, for police and law enforcement going forward? Answer from the member for Victoria. Oh, well, I thank the member for Barry Innisfil for his point about confusion, and I think that is a very fair point. And so the question is how one drafts the actual directive, and that could be done by quantity, saying how many grams would be affected, and the circumstances could be laid out. All of that could be done as a matter of public policy by careful drafting. But the point about confusion is absolutely right. We live in a very confused state of the law where something is essentially illegal in one province and wide open in another. It's time to fix that confusion once and for all. Reprise de débat. Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Salabari-sur-Roi. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker.